It's hard to believe that Fallout 76 is the same game that released back in 2018. Suffering from one of the most disappointing launches in video game history, it was frustratingly buggy, empty, and quickly written off as an unfinished multiplayer experiment gone wrong. So much so that many believed Bethesda would abandon the game and move on to other projects. Its story didn't end there though, as 14 major updates later, Fallout 76 is a drastically different game from when it was on launch day. Human NPCs returned, new quest lines and seasonal events have been introduced, and multiple new game modes have been added. Four years on and many people are asking the question again, is Fallout 76 worth playing now? And after logging hundreds of hours into this game, I believe I'm well placed to try to answer this question. This review isn't me dipping back into the game to trial the latest content for an hour or two, as I've played pretty consistently since launch. It certainly isn't perfect, bugs are definitely still a thing, the daily grind can be exhausting, and question marks remain over its future, particularly around story-based content. But starting with new players specifically, picking up a copy of the game today, you're in for the most complete experience this game has to offer. You'll be getting everything that came with launch, the main story that has players following in the footsteps of Vault 76's Overseer, alongside roughly 30 base game events and 14 public events. But you'll also be getting 13 out of 14 free major updates that have released during these four years. Kicking off with traditional story content, there is a lot to play through. Leaving the vault, you'll be meeting your first human NPCs early on, before embarking on quest lines featuring detailed speech options, numerous characters to talk to, and an overarching storyline that leads to decisions on how to proceed, with the outcome dependent on the choices you make. The Brotherhood of Steel also returned to Appalachia in two medium-sized storylines which of course now you can play back to back, without a 7 month wait in between. But there's a lot more to do in Fallout 76 outside of traditional story content, and the most unique aspect of this game, unsurprisingly, is the multiplayer experience. An online Fallout game was always going to be experimental, but ultimately I think it's been a revelation. Now this definitely won't be everyone's cup of tea of course, and although this game is based around a multiplayer model, it's not necessary to play with other people if you'd rather go it alone. The vast majority of the game is actually designed to be played solo, but there will certainly be bosses and public events that you will have an easier time tackling as a team. And there are a total of three endgame bosses to tackle now, and a host of new public events and seasonal events have also been added. Zetons return to a Fallout game with the Invaders from Beyond seasonal event, and Mothman Equinox expanded on the Mothman cultist's existing lore, introducing a whole new sub-faction. Both of these seasonal events are pretty good, and will no doubt be making a return in 2023. The Test Your Metal update also brought new challenge and public events, with Eviction Notice, Moonshine Jamboree, and Test Your Metal itself, which sees players competing in the Metal Dome Raider Arena. Finally, Nuka Odon Tour added a further free public events, which probably rank among the most fun in the game. Alongside these public events though, there's also Daily Ops, which provides challenging, randomised, and repeatable dungeon clearing missions. 2022 also saw new game mode Expeditions make its debut with the Pit update, taking players outside of Appalachia for the first time to post-war Pittsburgh for the second time in a Fallout title, with further Expeditions also on the horizon. It doesn't stop there though, with the game probably having one of the best multiplayer communities in the world. The camp building community in particular has taken the settlement building model from Fallout 4 up a notch, with the added bonus of being able to share and appreciate other players' builds in person. This is still one of the most popular aspects of Fallout 76, and camp building holds up really well compared to other building games. Free camp build mode was also recently introduced, giving players the ability to detach the camera and build with less restrictions. So if you enjoyed settlement building in Fallout 4, or you like building games in general, then Fallout 76 is probably worth checking out just for that. Alongside this, the Atomic Shop, Season Scoreboards, and in-game rewards have progressively improved over the years. One of the more controversial aspects of Fallout 76 is the paid subscription service Fallout First. This probably isn't something new players need for a first playthrough, particularly completing the story quest lines and tackling events, but it does offer some quality of life upgrades and extra features that might make it worth consideration. Of particular interest are the Scrap Box and Ammo Box, which allow players to store unlimited junk and ammunition without needing to make space in a standard stash box. I think for camp builders in particular, Fallout First is probably worth having. With many Atomic Shop releases being camp focused, the monthly atoms you receive can go towards new items, and there are also free additionally monthly rewards. School boards are the same story, with additional Fallout First rewards now a constant feature. Fallout First also gives players access to private worlds, their own instance adventure mode, and custom worlds, which are completely customizable private servers that have separate progression, able to change weather settings, building restrictions, and much more. It must be said that Fallout First probably has the most benefits it's ever had heading into 2023, but I'm not sure I'd recommend it to new players, it's probably best to try the game out first and see what you think. 
And if you're starting the game in 2023, then really you do have a ton of content to play through. Exponentially more than on launch day, with plenty more to do in the game besides. It's also pretty free risk expenditure wise because this game is on sale a lot. Fallout 76 is included with Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Plus players can actually pick it up from the monthly free games in January. There is no wait time between updates. All the content Bethesda has pumped into this game is readily available and this game has a lot to offer, even if you play it just for the content that's out already. And you have a lot to get through. And Bethesda have already announced that this game will have at least five years of future content updates. We'll go through that more later on. Prospective new players, you've got a pretty good game on your hands. But this is where the review is going to take a bit of a turn. Because where we start to run into some problems is the experience for long term players and end game content. And a great place to start is the two major updates that released at the end of 2022, which couldn't have gone more differently. Starting with the pit. There was a lot of expectation prior to its release. Some speculated it would be a narrative driven storyline with a new map where we might be able to build. Others that it would be daily ops in a new location. And sadly, the latter was closer to the truth. The pit is essentially daily ops. The world design, new characters, old enemies, and additional lore for post-war Pittsburgh was done well. Unfortunately, the way it was all packaged together was done less well in my opinion. To reach the pit requires completing refuge dailies, Located at a renovated White Spring, now home to the Reborn Responders, it centres around completing 3 out of 4 daily quests to charge a Vertibird Ultra Cell battery to actually travel to the pit. And these daily quests include things like cooking soup, taking some photos, donating junk, and a classic fetch and collect. The thinking behind the Responders moving in was to try and turn the White Spring into more of a player hub. This didn't seem like the way to do that though and added an extra layer of unnecessary, unenjoyable grinds just to reach the new update. And once you actually get there? The two missions are pretty fun the first couple of times. There are randomised stages which initially keep things fresh. But in conjunction with the mission rewards being limited to one rare plan per week, and 23 of the 39 rewards being Union Power Armor related, not great. All the rewards are purchasable via a vendor, but the economy of stamps, which are the new currency gained by completing expeditions, didn't translate that well. A max of 10 stamps gained from completing an expedition as team leader did little to work towards raw plans costing 140 stamps, for example. Essentially, the feeling of being forced to repeat the same missions repeatedly to earn enough stamps to purchase plans wasn't enjoyable for me. There also isn't currently a map for either mission, which can make navigation trickier than it needs to be. Which is a shame because those missions were structured pretty well. And like I said, a lot was done well with the pit. But getting that balance between fun and grind is something that could have been done better. And talking about getting that balance right, let's flip the script and talk about the second big update of the year, Nuka World on Tour. Probably the best update since Wastelanders back in 2020, it introduced the Nuka World on Tour Travelling Roadshow, a new location in the Ashkeep region where players could take on free all new public events, square off against a new endgame game boss, the Ultrasite Titan, play arcade games in the Nuka Cade, meet new characters, earn rewards, and much more. Each public event offers a different experience. Most Wanted, located at the Wild West Showdown, sees players hunting down the town citizens and stashing their looted belongings in a getaway wagon, before defending it against the robotic arm of the law and the sheriff. In Spin the Wheel, players join Bottle and Cappy in the Big Top Tent to become a contestant in the Spin the Wheel game show. As is actually my pick of the bunch, this event, as it introduced randomized stages including boss waves, horde waves, and a number of random challenges, which include Brahmin tipping and chicken chasing. And yeah, getting the fun aspect right was done so well with this event. Tunnel of Love sends players into a long abandoned mineshaft to help Mr. Lovely repair a romantic ride. Perhaps not as fun as the first two, but it does have its highlights, including attending an amusing robot wedding. And last but not least, seismic activity is found at the Nuka Launcher Coaster. Once players have launched the Nuka Abandoned Mineshaft 2, to face off against the newest endgame boss. The Ultrasite Titan is the biggest creature I think in any Fallout game, and it's made up of three stages which need to be completed within the time limit. To complement the new events, an abundance of really good event rewards were also added. Over a hundred new rewards, new food and drink items, and some really interesting characters all contribute to the success of this update. Comparing this to the pit for a moment, another nice feature with the fairgrounds is a natural player hub has formed. With each event in close proximity to each other, and the Nuka Cade also on site, players have begun to congregate between events, which has been great to see. This update was also significant as Bethesda worked with the UK-based developer Double Eleven 
who contributed significantly to the new Guadalajara Tour update, which I think they passed with flying colours. There have been some pretty severe performance issues for some players, but overall I don't think it detracts too much from the success of the update. This was a great update, fun and enjoyable rewards proportional to time spent playing for each event. So, two very different updates which were received very differently by a lot of the community. Although the pit left a lot to be desired, Nuka World on Tour delivered in a big way, and looking ahead to the future there are some promising signs. In an interview with OzGamer in March 2022, Fallout 76 design director Mark Tucker reported that a lot of his time is currently spent planning out the long term future of the game. Currently up to 5 years worth of content is slated, with a 3 year roadmap and a 5 year roadmap being worked on internally. The 3 year plan is rather fleshed out and well understood by the developers, but the 5 year plan is still being expanded. Tucker also emphasised the importance of player feedback and how that could shape the content plans for 2025 and 2026 respectively. Now news on these roadmaps has been a bit silent. Typically Fallout 76 will receive calendar roadmaps detailing content spanning half a year, so it's unlikely we'll ever see the full extent of this planned content in one go. But mentioning community feedback does give me a little bit of hope that Bethesda will listen to long term players and large sections of the community who are all saying the same thing. Fallout 76 needs another story base update. Although something on the scale of Wastelanders might be a pipe dream, with other projects like Starfield in production, the story in Fallout 76 doesn't feel close to being finished. How this game will line up with the other titles remains to be seen, and two storylines in particular seem to get the most traction in community discussions, these being the mysterious interloper and the return of the Enclave. What is somewhat encouraging with the latter is little clues have been added in other content. Enclave radio interceptors have been a regular feature in daily ops missions, and Orlando, a new NPC introduced with the pit, seems to hint that she may be working for them. Some recent data mines have also shown a selection of Enclave themed items, which are slated to arrive in future Atomic Shop updates. Considering the success of Nuke World on Tour, I also wonder whether the addition of Double Eleven and the video development studio Spirosoft, who both co developed Fallout 76 now, might mean extra resources. I would personally love to see Double Eleven given more updates to work on, and a story driven update might be within their capability. But moving away from speculation, we do know for sure that future expeditions are planned. Further missions were mentioned for the pit, and most excitingly, a new location that hasn't been visited in any other Fallout title. As I discussed earlier, I think some aspects of expeditions could really do with some work going forwards. It might even be an avenue to introduce smaller quest lines. But if they are to remain a daily up style game mode, then the reward system needs to be addressed. I think looking at the Nuka World on Tour update is a great start, as the rewards to repetition balance is far better. Update 15, Mutation Invasion, is the next confirmed major update in February, bringing a new scoreboard with Season 11, a new game mode mutated public events, and some long awaited updates to Daily Ops. It seems a lot of the confirmed content ties into Daily Ops in some way, as mutated public events are essentially a combination of Daily Ops mutations sporadically mixed with standard public events. Probably not the most exciting news on the surface, but new rewards have been mentioned. Update 15 is also bringing an update to Daylops itself, which is very encouraging, with Zetons being added to the roster, new locations are being added, and most importantly, new rewards plans, which ultimately was something I think needs to happen more. Balancing fun, grind, and new rewards is key to making Daylops style content playable long term, and it's encouraging to see this is being updated finally. But that is it for new content currently. It's good to keep things ticking over, and any new content is welcome. Personally, I believe this can only go on for so long though. A story update at the end of 2023, or even mention of one in the pipeline would do a lot for long term players. Steel Rain released back in July 2021, and the 7 major updates since have mostly been focused on adding more events. But with that we've reached the end of the video. Final thoughts then, this game has come a long way since that launch. For new players, you have a lot of content readily available, and the benefit of not having to wait long stretches between updates. This game is often available at a reduced price or completely free on some platforms, so if you're considering getting it, I would definitely recommend at least trying it out. For experienced players who may have clocked off because of a lack of story driven content, now might not be the time to return, although Nuka World on Tour is definitely worth checking out. What do you think of Fallout 76 heading into 2023 though? Do you think this game has improved sufficiently during these 4 years? And perhaps most importantly, do you believe it has a future? Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this particular video, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. With that said, I am off. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.